when the chat box. Thank you for confirming, Susan. So let's take a quick recap of what we have discussed yesterday. Thank you so much. Let's take a quick recap and let's proceed further. Yesterday was the day two. Yesterday was the day two. Let's take a quick recap. After the four features, after the four features of Python, we discussed about the interpreted programming language. How this is an interpreted programming language? Because whenever we develop any Python program, we need to save the file with an extension that is .py, file name .py. Whenever we execute the Python program, two processes takes place internally. One is compilation process and second is execution process. What is a compilation process? It is a process in which in which the Python compilers read the source code, read the source code line by line, check for the errors, and if the errors, it checks for the syntaxes, and if no errors found, then it will save the file. It will save the Python compiler into the byte code with, it, with an extension .pyc, means finding .pyc, and if the error found, then, then the error will be displayed on the console. Now, in the execution process, the PBM reads the Python intermediate code, that is a byte code, and reads the line and convert it into the machine understandable language, which is a binary format, and then, and then finally gives the result in which the users will understand it. What is PVM? PVM is the Python's virtual machine. PVM is what? It is a Python virtual machine. It is one of the program in Python software whose role is to read line by line of bytecode and convert it into the machine understandable language. So this was the diagram through which I have made you understand. This was a flowchart. We have saved the file with the sum.py extension. Python compilation compiler converted into the sum.pyc in the bytecode. First, it checked for the in syntaxes. If no error found, then it will convert it into the intermediate code that is sum.pyc. And in case the error is there, it will the error will be displayed on the console. After that, if no error found, then the PVM reads the bytecode line by line, convert it into the machine understandable language, that is a binary code, and which is read by the OS and gives the result. Now, after that, we discussed about the high-level programming language. We discussed about the two types of programming language. One is low-level and second is high-level. Now, what is low-level? In which in which low-level programming language is a language in which whenever we'll put the data, whether it's in binary format, whether it is in octal or in hexadecimal, it will remain like that. It will remain like that. And it is understandable by programmers. It is not understandable by, sorry, it is not understandable by the programmers and end users. But Python is a high-level programming language in which, in which whenever we give Whenever we write any binary code, octal code, or hexadecimal, it, it will automatically cut, convert it into the decimal format, decimal number system, which is understandable by the programmers and the 
end user. Shown you the example also. Shown you the examples also. Let's go back to the examples again. Let it take it once more, one more time. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Like we have discussed, A is equal to, I am saving the file, 0 V, which is a binary format, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, if I wanted to know what is a, what is the output in the decimal number system, it is 50. Now, if I'll write A is equal to octal 0 O, 0 O we need to say, whether it is capital 0 or sorry, whether it's a capital O or the in the lower case. It can be in the upper case or in the lower case. 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, if I write print A, I will get the output. Now, if we save the hexadecimal, like 0x, A is equal to, sorry, A is equal to 0x. Now, I'm taking capital. Sorry. A is equal to 0x. Oh my God. A is equal to 0x. 0x. Let me write 21 EDA. Okay. EDA. Let me write this. Now, print A. I'll get the output. I'll get the output. So it will automatically convert it into the decimal number format, which is understandable by the programmer also and the end user also. Hope whatever we have discussed is clear to you till now. Now, let's go ahead. It is a robust language. Why it is robust? Because of its exception handling. Now, what is exception? Exceptions are the runtime errors. Whenever we run the program, we'll get the errors. If we'll get the errors and handling those, handling those exceptions and generating the technical error messages, it will gen generating this, ex uh, sorry, technical error messages is called the robust. Now, converting those technical error messages, which is understandable by the programmer own look, only converting into the user-friendly error messages is called the exception handling. And if the Python programmer uses the exception handling, exception handling, the pro Python program is robust. Now, after that, we discussed about the extensible. Extensible means Python programming gives its programming facilities to the other languages also, like C++, Java, and all. So Python code can also be written in other languages also, like C++, Java. So hence, Python is one of the extensible language. Embedded. Embedded, it is called to be embedded because it, it can call other languages coding segments for fastest execution. Like Python code can also call the C programming code for its fastest execution. Now, extensible, uh, extensive support for third-party APIs. As Python libraries, APIs can do many tasks and operations, and still it is unable to perform the complex operations. But in order to solve these, in order to solve these complex operations easily and quickly, it uses the third-party API, like NumPy, which is used for numerical calculations, Pandas, which is used as an analysis tool. Matplotlib for data visualization. Same, we have the SkyPy and SkyKit also. So, this is what we have discussed yesterday. We started discussing about the literals, but we didn't proceed. Is this clear to you? Any questions? Students, any questions till now? Please confirm in the chat box. No questions. Let's proceed further. Let's go and talk about the identifiers and literals. Identifiers and 
little. Now, let's go ahead. Literals are what? Literals in Python are nothing but the values, but the values passing to the Python program. Students, just hold for a second. I have another thing called. Please, please hold for a minute. Please excuse me for a minute. I'm sorry, students, it was a client call. So let's proceed further. So literals in Python are nothing but values passing to the Python program. Programmatically, if we talk about whenever we write any Python program and we make the inputs, all those inputs are called the literals or the values. So all the values are literals. All the values are literals. In Python programming, we have five types of literals. They are integer literal, floating point literal, str literals, boolean literals, and collection literals. And collection literals. Let's go ahead. Now, identifiers or variables in Python. Whenever we enter input or literal, they are stored in the main memory by allocating sufficient amount of memory space with the help of data types. Please remember this. This is something very important that they are stored in the memory space by allocating sufficient amount of memory space with the help of data types. In order to process those data types, which was stored in the main memory as a programmer, we must, we must follow some distinct names. These names use as an identity. So whatever values stored in the memory space, they are called as the identifiers. 
So the value of identifiers are changing on verifying during the program executions. And hence, identifiers are also called, called as variables. So all types of input or literals must be stored in the form of variables. And all types of variables are called objects. As I've told you in the first session, that whatever we'll save, the, whatever we'll save, that is stored in the form of objects. That is stored in the form of objects in the main memory. Any questions till now? Any questions, students? No questions. Let's proceed further. Now, definition of variable. Definition of variable. A variable is an identifier whose values can be changed during the execution of the program. So, it is an identifier whose values can be changed during the execution of the program. Now, now let me show you <clears throat> rules of using identifiers or variables in the Python program. Whenever we use any variable, we need to follow the rules. Like, the variable name is a combination of alphabets, digits, and a special symbol. Please remember that variable name is a combination of alphabet, digits, and a special symbol that is underscore only. So, the first letter of variable name must start either with an alphabet or underscore. Although it can be a it can be a combination combination of alphabets, digits, and a special symbol underscore, but the first letter of variable name must start either with an alphabet or underscore only. Let's go ahead and see the examples. Let's go ahead and see the examples. Like, if I'm saving something, like, I'm writing sal salary is equal to 23.45. Now, this is acceptable. Now, if I'll print salary, I get the output. If I'll save port salary, Fourth salary is equal to 23.45. It is not accepted because it is starting with a numerical digit. Now, if I write, if I write underscore sal is equal to 23.45, this is acceptable. This is acceptable. Is this clear? Now, now, if I write, if I write employee underscore sal is equal to 23.45, this is also acceptable. But in spite of underscore, if I'll be using any other symbol at the first like at the rate sal is equal to 23.45. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. If I'm using anything like percentage of sal is equal to 23.45, this is also not acceptable. So it should start. It should start either with an alphabet or with the special symbol that is underscore only. Even the numerical digit is not acceptable. Even the numerical digit is not acceptable. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Now, if we we'll go ahead and see all those examples I have shown here. Now, no special symbols are allowed. But in case, if we'll write, if we'll write hash, hash, 
hash is only used for commenting purpose. Hash is used for commenting purpose. Like if I'll write sal is equal to 45, this is acceptable. Employee underscore employee space sal. Now space is also a special character, but it will be acceptable. It will be acceptable. Now, if I write sal of an employee, let me show you this with an example practically. Like if I'm writing sal is equal to 45, this is acceptable. Now, if I'm writing employee space, this is a special character, sal is equal to 56.25c. C. Now, in case if I'll write, in case if I'll write sal hash employee. Now I'm writing print. Just a second. Let me write sal hash employee. It's 45. It's 45. Why? Because hash is used for the commenting purpose. It will not be it will not be taken as a special symbol. It will not be taken as a special symbol. It will be considered as a comment. Clear? Is this clear to you guys? Very good. Let's go ahead. Now, now, no keywords, no keywords like else and if are acceptable in the programming language. No keywords like else and if are acceptable. Only else and if. I'm talking about if I write else one underscore if that is acceptable. If I write else and if only, they are not acceptable because they give special meanings to the compilers. We'll discuss about it later on. Later on. Now, all variable names are case sensitive. Okay, like if I write age is equal to 19, age is equal to 20. Now, if I write like this, and if I print like this, I will not get the output 19 only. I will get the output whatever I have made. Why? Because these are case sensitive. Is this clear? Is this clear to you guys? Now, it is always recommend to, it is always recommend to use the user friendly variable name like total salary, total salary of an employee. If I write like this, although this is clear, but this is not understandable. This is not understandable properly. It is valid, but it is not recommended. So if I will use total underscore sal underscore employee is equal to 45, this is valid also, and this is recommended also. Although even this is not wrong, but this is not recommended because this would confuse everyone. So if we will write like this, this is acceptable also, valid also. Clear? Am I clear till here? Any questions? Any questions, you can raise your hands or you can always give. ask me in the chat box. No questions. Very good. So let's talk about the data science now. Let's talk about the data science. Now, whenever we talk about the data science students, data science, I wanted to tell you purpose of data science, <clears throat> purpose of data science.
Yes. Data types in Python. Purpose of data types in Python is to allocate the sufficient amount of memory space for storing the values or literals in the main memory of computer. And we all know what is the main memory? It is a RAM. In Python programming, we have 14 data types, which are also known as the classes. And they are classified into six categories. One is fundamental category data type. Second is sequence category. Third is list category. Fourth is set category. Then dict category and none type category. In the, in the fundamental category, we have int type, float type, bool type, and complex type. Sequence category, we have str types, bytes type, byte array, and range. List category, we have list and tuple. Set category, we have set and frozen set. Dict category, we have dict. And none type, we have none type only, whose value is called none. So, so, these are 14 data types which are categorized into six categories. Now, it is very important. So, we are proceeding further. Hope whatever we have, under, we have discussed till now is clear to you. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Now, when we talk about the data types in Python. Let's talk about the int type. Let's talk about the fundamental category data type first. Now, in the fundamental category data types, we have, it is used to store the single values in the form of single objects. Okay. So, we have four data types like int, float, bool, and complex. So, let's discuss about the int. It is one of the predefined class and treated as a fundamental category data type. And purpose of int data type is to store the integer data or integral data or whole numbers. Numbers without decimal places. Numbers without decimal places. Let's take an example. Let's take A is equal to 100. B is equal to minus 345 now if i'll write if i'll write c is equal to zero now i'm taking c is equal to zero now if i write print a and we wanted to know the type of a it is 100 print b Type of V, it is minus 345. Now print C, type of C, it is 0. Right? Now let's take this is a class int. Now let's take A is equal to 12. B is equal to 34. Now, C is equal to A plus B. Now, if I write print A, we got the output. This is an integer type. Print B, got the output class integer. Print C, 46. Let's take the negative format also a is equal to minus 12 b is equal to minus 45 c is equal to a plus b now if i write print a got the output print b got the output this is also the class int and print c got the output which is a class int so numbers without decimal places are considered as an integer value now with integer type with int data type we can store the four different types of number system one is binary number system 
decimal number system, octal number system, and hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal number system. Let's go ahead. Decimal number system is a user-friendly number system, which is understandable by everyone. Let's go ahead. Now, when we are discussing about the decimal number system, see. Decimal number system is one of the default number system understandable by people. This number contains the following digits, that is 0 to 9. So total digits are 10. So base is 10. If we talk about the binary number system, the number system data understandable by the OS and the processor during application execution. This number system contains the following digits, base 0 and 1, so its base is 2. Base is 2. So in Python program, binary data must be represented or stored in the variable of 0v or 0v. Syntax for this is, Variable name is equal to 0v. This is a binary data. Variable name is equal to 0v in the uppercase also, which is also the binary data. So do you want me to tell you about the conversion process or will it understandable by you? Do you want to understand it? That how this is converted? I've shown you the examples here. Shown you the examples here. See shown you the example so do you want to know the conversion process please confirm how actually the conversion takes place no response are the students sleeping in the class is it that boring is it that boring So, no one of you, no one of you wants to understand this. Very good. Very good. Let's go ahead now. Let's go ahead. Now, when we talk about the octal number system data, Satya Vijay, Vijay, okay. Okay, now when we talk about the octal number system data, octal number system data, in this, we have, we have, let me show you with the uh, example of binary format. Let me show you one more time. Let me write its base is 0, A is equal to 0, B. Now I'm writing in capital 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Now if I write print A, I'll get the output. Now, but if I'll write 0b, 0b, in spite of this, I'll write 5 also. This is not, this is not acceptable. Syntax error. Same with the octal number system. Same with the octal number system. Now, when we talk about the octal number system, when we talk about the octal number system, it's, it, what does it has? It has the digits 0 to 7. 0 to 7. So we we use 0 O in the lowercase or it can be in the uppercase also. Like if I write A is equal to A is equal to 0 O 0 O 2 5 7 2 5 7. Now if I write print A I'll get the output. I'll get the output. Why? Because it has seven digits. It has total eight digits and it contains zero till seven. So its base is eight. Total digits are eight. So its base is eight. Now let's go ahead with the let's go ahead with the let's go ahead with the hexadecimal number system. Now, hexadecimal number system is used in the development of OS. 
This number contains the 16 digits. How come? 0 till 9, 10 digits. And then A, B, C, D, E, and F. A will be considered as 10. B will be considered as 11. C as 12. D as 13. E as 14 and F as 15. So total digits are 16 and this base is 16. Let me show you. See, this is a hexadecimal number system. 0 till 9. I forgot to write 0 here. 0 till 9. 0 will be considered as 0 in the decimal number system. But 9 till 9, it will be considered as 9. But A will be considered as 10, B will be considered as 11, C will be 12, D will be 13, E will be 14, and F will be 15. So total number, total number what we have is 16. So its base is 16. So whenever we represent, whenever we represent the hexadecimal number system, what we need to write is 0x. 0, x, whether in the small format or in the capital format. Now, let me show you. Let me show you. If I write, zero x, a is equal to, no, zero x, let me write, b. It can be in the small letters, it can be the uppercase, it can be the lowercase. Now, print A. Got it. Now, if I write A is equal to 0x. Now, I'm writing F A C E. Now, print A. See, it is converted. It is converted. Is this clear to you guys? Is this clear to you guys? Now, please remember that if I write, if I write A is equal to, A is equal to, no, no, because we, you need to give the variable name as I've told you. As I've told you, Shrikant, we need to give the variable name all the time. We have already discussed about it. Now, if I write A is equal to A is equal to 0, 7, double 6. <coughs> I'm sorry. 0, 7, double 6. We'll get the error. Because whenever we write the decimal integer literals, whenever we write the decimal integer literals, it's 0 is not permitted. Leading zeros is not permitted in the decimal integer literals. It is only acceptable in the Octolimits, octal integers. Is this clear? Even if we talk about the binary format, we can add the digits also. Like if I if write A is equal to 0 B 1 1 1 1 plus plus 0 B 1 0 1 0. Now, if I write print A, I get the output. I'll get the output. But we cannot do all these things in the octal or hexadecimal. Clear to you guys? Now let's go ahead and talk about the float value. Let's go ahead and talk about the float value. This is one of the predefined data class and treat it as a fundamental data type. Now, whenever we talk about the float value, float stores the real constant values or the floating point values. Means number with the decimal 
places. Numbers with the decimal places. Like if, like if I'll write A is equal to 12.34 or 35. Now, in this case, if I'll write print A, type of A. So numbers with the decimal places will be considered as the float value. Will be considered as the float value. Now, A is equal to 1.2 or 12.32. B is equal to 45.36. Now, C is equal to A plus B. Now, if I'll write print A, type of A. Now, print B, type of B. Now, print C, type of C. Got the output. So, number with the decimal places will be considered as the float values. 1 question how is 0b1111 is 15 please please explain ma'am that is what i was asking you that is what i was asking you that you wanted to know the conversion or not do you wanted to know the conversion or not and you said no you said no so do you wanted to know the conversion students Do you want it to know the conversions? That is what I was telling you. Just hold for a minute. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Just hold for a second. I'll tell you. Just hold for a second, students. I'll show you so that it will be easier for you. It will be easier for you. Just a second. Students, don't you worry about it. I'll check it and will tell you. I'll check it and will tell you. Okay, where it, I have placed it, I don't remember right now. I'll check it and we'll get back to you. Tomorrow, I'll give you the examples. I'll tell you about the conversion of everything. Okay? how the octal data is converted, how the floating 
and how the hexadecimal is converted and how the decimal format is converted. So I'll tell you. So let's go ahead with the floating point values. Now floating data type does not support, please remember this, floating data type does not support octal number system data, binary number system data, or hexadecimal number system data. Like if I write A is equal to 0B1111.0B1111, B 0 B 1 0 1 0. It is invalid decimal literal. If I write A is equal to, if I write A is equal to 0 0 2 3 2 3 now and I am taking hexadecimal also 0 x a c c now here also I will get the I'll get the error. Is this clear to you? Is this clear to you? So, in order to make you understand, let's we wind up the session today. Let's wind up the session today. Rest we'll discuss tomorrow. Let's we'll continue with the floating point values tomorrow, and I'll tell you the conversion also. I'll tell you the conversion also. Will that be fine? Will that be fine with you guys? Okay. No problems. No problems, students. Anything else I can help you with? Any questions till now? No questions. Sherwood, what about the what? What do you want to ask about? Documents will be shared with the paid candidates only. Documents will be shared with the paid candidates only. Okay, till then you'll get the recordings. Till then you'll get the recordings. But the documents will be shared with the paid candidates. So, in order, if you are satisfied with this, you need to pay the fee. If you are satisfied with the class, you need to pay the fee. Anything else I can help you with? No problems. Rest. No problems. So, we'll see you tomorrow at exact sharp six tomorrow again and we'll discuss about it and we'll tell you we'll tell you how the conversion process takes place also okay till then please take care of yourself goodbye